guess the question is, why do I still have an XP30? So it's a little out of the ordinary to be doing a video on a Roland XP30 in the year 2022. And it's a bit out of character for me to have one, given that my overall strategy is to do everything with virtual instruments in the box. So you might have a few questions like, why do I still have this XP30? How do I use it? And is it still useful for recording in Logic? Well, the first question is pretty easy to answer. I actually tried to sell this keyboard quite a while ago, and I couldn't get any good money for it, so I thought I might as well just keep it. It has more than 1,400 preset patches from Roland, and it's kind of the sum of some of Roland's best sounds up until the year 1999. So the bottom line there is, for the amount of money I was being offered to sell it used, I thought I might as well keep it. The way I have the XP30 connected is with an equally old MIDI multi-port, as you can see here. It's probably 15 or 20 years old, but it connects via USB and it still works. So it gives you four MIDI ports out and two in. If you take a look at the back of the XP30 and the way I have cabling, I've got the left and right audio cables connected to my audio interface for audio input. And I've got MIDI in and out cables, the old style 25 pin connectors connected to that multi-port device. And it seems to work fine. Logic recognizes it right away. And as far as using it inside of Logic as an external MIDI instrument, let me show you exactly how. Here's a blank Logic project that I'm gonna set up to use with the Roland XP30 as an external instrument. First thing I need is a MIDI track. So I'm gonna choose external instrument. And I've got a choice here, which I'll go through later on using an external instrument plugin. There is a logic specific plugin for using external instruments, but I'm not gonna use that. I have a whole other video, which I'll link up above, and you can take a look at how to set up external instruments with logic. You'll see my MIDI destination is that MT4 and it's uh, port one dash one. So I'm gonna create this. Like I said, it's just gonna be a, an empty MIDI track. And there you go. So it, because it's sending MIDI out through that port, getting audio back, and I'm really actually hearing that through the mixer. So all that can be recorded here is the MIDI. I'll show you. So there's no sound attached to that, and there's no way to record the sound from the XP30 with just this MIDI sent track. What you need is another audio track. So I'm creating an audio. You need to know how you've got the XP30 connected, in my case, through to my Apollo through ADAT. And I happen to know it's on inputs 11 and 12. Okay, so if I create this track and put that on record, you can see signal coming back. If I was to uh, record something here. You'll see the track up here has the MIDI, track number two, and track number three has the audio coming back from the XP30. That's one way to set it up. For this to all work, I had to create an environment and if you've got a new version of Logic and you click on Window, you're going to look down here and say, hey, where'd the environment go? Well, it's, it's a bit buried. You have to click on the Option key. And there it is, Open MIDI Environment. And you'll see I have this object called XP30. And all this is is a multi-timbral object that has all the patch names for the XP30. And um, you'll see it's got the, the different banks identified here. And if you were to click on any one of these, you get the sound. Here's. And this is, this is huge. I mean, this is a huge help because, you know, this is giving me access to all 1400 patches from within Logic. And I can just pick whatever I want. Something 
familiar, a famous D50 stack. <laughs> all kinds of great stuff in there. Lots of familiar rolling patches, I mean. Some of my favorite uh, great stuff. There's the standard 64 voice piano. Uh, from that point forward, you know, you can record any sounds that you want off the XP30 and have them built into your Roland project any which way you want. Once you're happy with the MIDI, you know, you can, you can decide if you want to commit it to audio, which is what the second track looks like, right? There are different ways of acquiring all those classic Roland sounds and one way is picking up a used rack unit there's the jd 990 the jv 2080 and the ubiquitous jv 1080 which is pretty inexpensive to buy but when you look at them all the xp30 is actually one of the best deals out there yeah it's a keyboard and you may not be looking for another keyboard but it does come with 1406 patches and 28 rhythm kits which far exceeds what some of those other rack units can deliver Another option is to acquire the Arturia software synths. They have quite a collection of more than 28 classic synthesizers, including some Roland sounds. And you'll see if you scroll through their website, that two of them that would probably spring to your attention are the, uh, the Juno series and the Jupiter series, which are really good emulations. And you can buy those in different ways, but the most cost-effective way is to get the Analog Lab V collection. There is a intro version that's free and you can upgrade it later if you want to get more presets. The last and most obvious method of getting those Roland sounds would be to go to Roland Cloud, which has quite an assortment of all of their classic synths, including drum machines and both analog and digital synthesizers. Roland Cloud is acquired as a membership, which is really a subscription. And there's different levels and you need to decide what level is right for you. Some people are comfortable with that. Some people like to own it outright. In my case, it was easier to keep the XP30 and own those sounds than it was to consider a Roland Cloud subscription. If you're new to this channel and you like this video, click on the like button and consider subscribing. When you subscribe or click on the notification bell, it helps my channel grow.